Beijing. It's your fault you almost got your ass stumped out by Chris. Why would you come on the show and ambush Chris and Paige? Baby, this boy, it went real wrong. But oh, it went real right too, okay? You guys, this was the reunion. And let me tell you something. Do y'all know it's about to be a part two? We got the, y'all got to see me next week so we can keep talking about this, okay? people it is your girl carla what's up i'm so happy to see you guys again all right so you guys i know y'all watched it the foolishness y'all i'm so proud of chris for cutting them split ends sometimes you got to just let the shit go sometimes you just got to cut them ends it's just hair baby it'll grow back but i'm happy he cut them dead ass ends that we've been seeing all season I'm real happy about that, but you know, ain't much change. She still got on the, the window pane suits, okay? And, um, uh, it, it, but you know what? Our girl Paige, baby, she looked keto friendly, didn't she? She was snatched. I said, all right now. I'm glad she left that Dollar Tree wig right where it was at. On the, on the stand or in the bag. I'm so glad she didn't bring that synthetic blend out. But you guys, we are at the the finale but these fools and goop dust and did they got a part two coming next week so y'all we got to talk again we got to talk again about this craziness that we just watched so today we're on married at first sight atlanta reunion part one and of course you guys already know it's season 12 episode 18 I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to lie to y'all. When I first watched it, I was like, uh, okay, this is boring as hell. Like, this is boring. Bring on the goodness. Bring on the Williams family. Okay? But they said we're going to drag Before this shit Before I forget, let's get, you know, let's get church announcements out the way. Because, baby, the congregation, we got a word today. We got a couple words. Okay? Um, But before we start, we would like to um say, I would like to say thank you. Okay, for attending church service today, as y'all can see, <clears throat> I'm very pulled together, right? Look, looking, I don't look like Usher board, I look more like a uh, first lady, don't I? <laughs> um, but yes, I would like for you guys to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And again, my name is Carla, and don't forget, like the video, okay? Like the video, and of course. Some of you have already joined me at my lifestyle and uh, family channel, Carla Janelle, because that's me. I am Carla Janelle. I started another channel dedicated more towards vlogs and myself and my family life and just growth. OK, and if that's something you're interested in, go to that channel and like the videos and subscribe as well. OK, it's good content and I really put a lot of work into it. But anyway. Y'all ain't here to see Carla. You know, y'all didn't come to see Sister Jackson. Y'all came for the tea. So let's get we into got it. the backpedaling and pussy popping couple, Eric and Virginia. Baby, they, um, all I'm going to say about them is, um, I guess they got amnesia. They don't, they don't remember. It don't bother them or something. All of a sudden, now Virginia partying is not an issue for Eric. Okay. Now, Eric, baby, I don't know. What you saw, I don't know why we backpedaling. You and went to the experts on her and her drinking. You have told her she drank too much and she partying too hard. And now we get on TV on the final day, supposedly. And you don't find nothing wrong with her. It's the it's the cameras and the editing that made it look like she drank too much. She ain't got a problem. Who you fooling? That's all that girl talked about was kicking it, getting low, dropping it low. Shorty got low, 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 low. That uh, every I mean, seriously. I can just picture her. You if y'all don't think she got a drinking problem, look at what the hell she wore. Look at what she wore. She wore a damn party dress to the final tape in her reunion. She wore a party dress. It had shingles and shit. I said, I wanted a shake for me. Just 
shake for me. I just wanted to shake. Just getting low with the shake. Just turn it with the shake. Okay, last week she looked like Old Navy. This week she looked like she about to go to the tavern. All I'm saying is, y'all can say you you can sit there and say she ain't got a drinking problem. She got a wardrobe problem for sure. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Uh, Virginia says, "Oh no, Eric is not controlling." I said, "Oh hell no, oh no, we we not doing this. We no." I just can't believe this. And then they bring Eric mom on there and she was like, oh no, I was I was really excited about them getting married. I just hope that everything worked out. I said, okay, now the whole damn family liars. You know what? Y'all two belong together. As, as crazy as it might be, have all the damn Hennessy you want. Move right around. Right. Um, damn, they was born as hell. And why did Ryan look like Amish? <laughs> weird ass man <laughs> dude had the turned up mustache looking like monty looking like he went to he he in french class wee wee party -vous. like <laughs> ryan looks he always looks a damn mess to me like a character that's what he looked like a damn character and virginia is just sitting there like <laughs> Yeah, um, we're still married. They're still married. Um, we're still married. So is Eric and um the drunker. They still married too. Yeah, we're still married, married. These fools hit me with the we get remarried. I said something new one happened. What what new? Come on, Kevin. Kevin, what what new happened? Kevin said, Oh, is love in the air? Are you guys in love? Huh? You you was talking to me, Kevin. You you was talking to me. Oh, um. Well, uh, you said do, do I love her? Um. Um. I mean, cause you guys are getting remarried. I mean, you're getting remarried, so. It, it, what are y'all doing if you're not in love? What are you doing? I I, I think I I think I love her. I, I think I love her. You think or you know? Ryan, really, Ryan? Okay. So then Kevin says, well, that means you got some cuddy. Did you get some cut? I, I don't know. I mean, we fell asleep last night watching TV. I mean, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I said, okay, Ryan, we understand it. We get it, boo. You don't like talking about sex on film. Okay, we get it. You're not a virgin. That was already asked and you confirmed. Like, no, I'm not a virgin. Hi, hey, mom, I'm not. I was like, if your mama still think that you're a virgin at the age you are, something wrong with her. Something wrong with her. Like seriously, no, no, like no, no tea, no, like no, no shade, no tea, no nothing. Something wrong with her if she think that you just owes and you ain't put your. Anyway, I'm sorry, I was about to go off on a damn tangent. Anyway, these fools get remarried. Um, I guess they finally, well, <laughs> they, um, Claire just happy that he love her. Okay, in love, they ain't there yet. It's been over six months. She's still there, hanging on by a thread. Um, have they consummated the marriage? We pretty much know. Yes, they have. They just don't speak on it. Brianna, um, our girl, insensitive ass Vincent, baby. Woo! They didn't have much either going on with them. I wish I could tell you. Um, Sparks was flying. They, I mean, she just was smiling and she, she was just with, you know, she was just cheesing. I, I did, you know, like her little straw set or roller set, whatever she got. I did like that. But yeah, um, he did realize. I like that he saw himself back and realized he he overreacted. But y'all, I'm going to tell y'all, he said, I am not. I, I wasn't displaying sensitivity. I was displaying anxiety because I knew that the whole world was watching me. And I was I was trying to be real smooth and cool. And I was like. Okay, so you you make her out to be an asshole for standing up for herself.
because you worried about what people think and the image that your chunky ass was putting out. I don't understand that. Like, so what? You was gaining weight. We all gain weight. Hell, you ain't two tons of fun. All I'm going to say is they're still married. It seems to be working out. She even learned to fall back a little bit. Like, sometimes you got to let real shit be real shit. Like, leave some dishes in the sink. It's okay, boo-boo. They'll get done in the morning. Or, you know, sometimes not make the bed. Sometimes you just got to leave it where it's at. But, um... Vincent, but I will tell y'all what made me laugh. Vincent boot camp when he looked like Power Tap. Power Tap. Y'all remember Power Tap from um Norbit? Norbit. Y'all remember the movie Norbit? And y'all remember when he Power Tap. Vincent looked like Power Tap to me for some reason. When he had her working out and had Vincent's boot camp, that was like the funniest thing to me. That had me hollering. That I mean, my God, that was just hilarious. Talking about the drink and everything, it was it was fun. But yeah, they're still married, and um, Vincent saw himself and didn't like how he was kind of worried about what we were thinking and overdoing it and making her out to be, you know, this very overbearing, controlling person. And he said, you know, no, she's not that way. I just was really, you know, I was having a lot of anxiety. So, okay. I guess we can say he got anxiety and not just overtly sensitive, I guess. I don't even feel like dealing with Jacob and Haley. I'm just going to say this. When the girls linked up together, there are two things I noticed. One, Haley basically confirmed what we've been saying all season. Um, Jacob ain't got that stroke game. That stroke game is not for real with him. It's not a connection for them. She said, um, we did it and, um, we can say we did it. And she said, that's what it is. And then she says, you know, I don't want to speak on him. I don't want to speak about how weak he is in bed. But I mean, yeah, we pretty much knew that. I mean, some of y'all, some of you guys, I remember y'all in the comment section talking about some Carla. I mean, it could just be, you know, that he was nervous or maybe that ain't it. Maybe it's something... Don't you feel crazy as hell now? The girl said he ain't got it. Okay, it ain't in him. It won't, no connection. Unfortunately, the sad part is what we did see, we judged her so harshly on because she did sleep with that man and then acted like, like that man couldn't buy her a soda. She did act like that. She did, she, she smashed the man and then didn't want to have nothing to do with him. So honestly, let's just say this. With Haley and Jacob. Haley was not attracted to Jacob from the start. Just like Chris wasn't with Paige. But we gonna get to that. Haley wasn't attracted. She tried at the beginning. She tried. And when I say tried, that's very, very loose. She tried to put herself out there by being really cordial. And trying to open up. But then... Once she got drunk and that stroke game wasn't right, she was like, uh, yeah, even the bracelet ain't gonna, the bracelet, nothing's gonna make me stay. And she just week after week started shutting down, okay? She was more into her white claws, her drink, and her cup than she was into her marriage. That's about all I'm gonna say about that, okay? Now, our girl Paige. Paige, the one thing you and Chris got in common that I see, y'all don't like correction and you guys don't like people to speak on your behaviors and your actions. Neither one of you. Y'all both don't like correction. Mm -hmm. Pastor said Chris don't like correction and we saw how that went tonight. We saw, okay. Chris don't like correction and Paige, you don't either. But I'm going to tell y'all, y'all look at, y'all look at, look at Paige's face. When Virginia was speaking on how dumb as hell Paige was acting when it came to Chris, do she looked like, bitch, I'll choke you. That's what she looked like. She looked like, 
Say one more thing and I'm going to just slap the shit out of you. Because I told you, my man and told you. And you keep running off like you and Eric is 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 got y'all shit together. But you gonna keep you gonna keep talking on me. You speaking on me, and I'm tired of you speaking on me. When these women were telling her, like, we think you're too good for this, you're too good for him, and it she couldn't receive it because she was on a defense mode. She is on this defense mode, like, I don't care what I did, I was married. I don't care what was happening between me and my husband. At the time, I feel like God gave me him and I was supposed to go through everything with him. Yep, Paige. God put you through it, didn't he? I hope you learned something from it. I really hope you learned something from it because these women, they were giving their honest feedback to you and I don't think you were receiving it and this is not the first time they have given you honest feedback and I promise y'all no I'm not beating up on that girl but every single time someone tells her about herself or about the man she's with or her marriage it is it seems like it goes in one ear and out the other she doesn't receive well she doesn't receive her errors well she just doesn't. If anything, she's going to counter it with an excuse or counter it with some bad behavior like running back or excuse or, or making an excuse for his behavior. Like he's showing the hell out. I ain't like what they got to do with him. We are going through a divorce. So whatever he doing over here mm -mm. and Kevin. Yeah, we get into that. But Kevin, don't ask her to sit, sit Chris stupid ass down no more. That is not her responsibility. That is not her damn problem. She is divorcing him. That is Mercedes' problem. Okay? Don't ask her, can you get him to calm down? No, I'm going to tell you why. Because she ain't never been able to get his ass to calm down. Now we on to the good stuff, y'all. Woo! So, Wendell Payne, Chris comes in, baby. And we, we, we get keto-friendly. Page, honey, Kevin asked some really good questions that we've been asking. And Kevin said, I'm a fan of the show, so I'm gonna ask the shit. We start off with um hearing how many times Chris said that Paige ass was ugly. You show is ugly, <laughs> y'all. Our girl Paige. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Let me. Oh, congregation. Oh. Y'all, Sister Paige says Chris broke her spirit when he called her ugly. I said, then bitch, you need to be dead. Because he called you ugly so many times. From the time you got married, he told your homegirls. Oh, uh, no, nah, she not good. She not attractive at all. He told you to your face. You ain't that cute, boo. He goes to the pastor and says, of all the women in Atlanta, this who y'all picked for me? This bugger wolf? He said, oh, oh hell no. Nah. All the Dollar Tree wigs and Party City and pump it up in the world. I ain't gonna be feeling her. This is, she is not, what do you tell? She is not on my level that I'm normally with. And I was like, okay, sis, you heard, you heard that. I know you passed your hearing test. You heard that. And you still was trying with this ninja? What's wrong with you? Now that ain't Chris, that's your ass. What's wrong with you? Chris just took advantage of the situation like he been doing all season long, taking advantage of you and your situation. You know what situation you have, sis? The situation of loneliness. The situation of dumbfoundedness. The situation of troubled over bridge, murky waters. Okay, but here's what we want to know. Kevin, I hope you ask this next week. Um, why did you continuously go back and try to be with a man who didn't find you attractive? Because you just said 
yeah, it hurt for your spouse not to be, you know, um, to want you or, or be physically attracted to you. So then why didn't you say, pause? You don't feel, you not feeling me like that? I'm not what you want, looking for. My looks don't get you. Okay. Um. So Kevin says, uh, Chris, when did you, when did you know about the baby? I said it. Y'all can run it back. Y'all can look at my past videos. I said, Chris knew about that baby before they went on that damn honeymoon. And he said, oh, uh, after we got married, because I wouldn't have married her if I, uh, uh, if I knew about the baby. Mm -hmm. The show, Ambush Chris and Paige. Baby, here come Pastor Beijing himself. Looking like Chris Big Brother. He comes through with the wet and wavy hair. And baby, Chris was looking like what? Pastor Williams here. I ain't seen that danger since I told him don't call my... You can tell. When I say Southside Chicago came out, he cussed that pastor the hell out. I ain't even gonna say the fuck the I'm y'all know what I mean, baby. He said he was on bull. He said, I mean, he he basically said he was a weak mother. <laughs> baby, when I tell you, couldn't nobody calm Chris down. Chris was ready to go. He was trained to go, baby. He was a rock wilder. Rock Wilder. Couldn't nobody handle him. Couldn't nobody handle him. And I said, well, then Chris was like, Chris, Kevin Ferguson was like, Kevin, Kevin was like, Chris, calm down. Calm down. Get your anger together. Get it in check. He was like, F him. If it ain't Pastor Cow, F this ninja here. It's his fault. It's his fault that Paige and I are not together. I said, now, wait a minute. What? What? Wait a minute. What? 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 What are we saying? The Beijing says, now, listen, I only came to Paige with concerned heart, wanting to guide her in the most spiritual way I could. I was not on anything malicious. Y'all know how them pastors get that, that tone with them. I was not on anything malicious. I wanted to offer her guidance, but I'm going to tell you this. Chris was like, you still disrespectful. You still, dis you're a disrespectful ass person. He was like, but I'm gonna offer, when she didn't take my advice, I stepped back. Cause I was trying to tell her, Mercedes ass ain't pregnant and you dumb as hell for sticking with this man when I have told you Chris moved too fast okay now pastor I will say this pastor Beijing listen now you did blow up Chris spot by telling that woman that he had been engaged prior times before you did do that now you did tell that man business that is where you should have started the apology and maybe you could have apologized for reaching out to his wife without his knowledge okay i give you two you may have said you know what chris i apologize for th two things one for speaking to your wife without you you know knowing or in speaking on your business without you know advising you that was my mistake. Okay, that's what apology stopping in for me because um, pastor says he going to stop disrespecting me or shit going to get me. Because Chris said, you know what? I ain't got these split ends no more. So, you know, I whip my head back and forth. You know, I whip my head back and forth. Chris ain't got them split ends no more. Chris said back. Chris was like, you was comparing Paige to Mercedes and that wasn't right. I said, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold the hell on. Now you compared her first to Mercedes. But you ain't heard it from me. I'm just gonna mind my damn business. 
Y'all, Chris basically says he ain't mending shit. It ain't the day. It ain't the time. Ain't no love. Ain't no love. And all of a sudden, Chris says, what you want to do, homeboy? What you want to do? He said, because he, I mean, Pastor said, he's going to stop cussing at me. He's going to stop disrespecting me. Chris walked out and said, if you want to do something about it, meet me in the parking lot. I said, oh, parking lot pimping, parking lot pimping. Baby, when I say Paige got in the middle, I said, you might want to sit your keto frail looking ass down because um, they're going to have some furniture moving in this mug. And baby, by, you ain't got no weight on you. You just got that ass. But um, you might want to move, boo. You might want to move out the way and let these two men have it out. Because at this point, this ain't got nothing to do with you. He broke boy code. That's what he feel like. The pastor violated bro code. That's how Chris feel. Okay? And somebody going to have to have, um, they going to have to lay hands, have a, a test of, a test of a fine moment, benediction, something. Okay? It is not communion Sunday. We are not breaking bread. We need to have resurrection Sunday. Okay? And it ain't happening today. So all I'm saying is, congregation, we're going to see what happened next week, you know, in church. Because um, pastor, the two pastors, because y'all know Chris said he was a man of the cloth too. I said, well, he sure said, he, 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 he sure said uh, punk ass and this mf -er, he he said those words really well. See, he used those words before. Yeah, so they gave, they both gave us a word. They both gave us a word. It was a bit, the benediction was, was well today. But we're going to watch it, um, part two, because they knew what they were doing. Lifetime knew what they were doing. They split it up, and they've never, ever done this before. But they know Chris is a whole damn character in show. He is giving great TV, and they said, we got to get one more episode out of y'all. One more. So, you guys, next week, we will be back with Pastor Beijing. We're going to see if he get his hands laid on him. And, um... Yeah, I'll see you guys soon. If you guys like this video, like my commentary, the review, the recap of the show, and this foolishness. And if you like my personality and my crazy ass foolishness, then like this video. And don't forget, hit subscribe. Hit subscribe. Come on, girl. Come on. I know you got some commentary. Don't forget to leave your comments below on what you thought of the episode. Because Chris gave us south side of chicago okay he cussed his pastor friend spiritual advisor out okay and couldn't nobody handle him kevin kevin couldn't handle him on the tv chris chris just Paige just looked at him saying chris chris baby i would have walked out too i would have said oh this is for the birds i'm done i would have went the other way let them deal with it Pastor Beijing looked like he was scared as shit, though. He was like, what's wrong with him? Where is he at? Which way did he walk? <laughs> he didn't want it. He did not want it with Chris. Baby, he did not want it with him. He was like, because if I get sweaty, all oh, my Beijing is about to start running. And I can't have that, okay? So, which way did he go? Because I'm going to go the other way, okay? Security. Where is Security. That's where he was on. But you guys, we're going to watch next week, part two. If you like me again, I just want you to comment below. And I'll see you guys next week. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing and voicing all your comments, concerns. But you guys, I'm on the road. My Oh, I forgot to tell y'all. One last thing. My one-year YouTube anniversary is coming up in June. So we are on the road to 2K. May not be a lot for some, but it's a lot for me. So we're on the road to 2K. So I encourage everyone to like, comment, subscribe. And um, let's keep this thing going. Yes, my one-year YouTube anniversary came quick, but it's coming. So I would love to get to 2k and definitely have a 2k giveaway that would be amazing but thank you guys for watching subscribing head on also over to carla janelle my lifestyle channel where you'll get a little bit more from me 
And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.